In this video is an example of rotational dynamics, where there's force, there's torque, there's moment of inertia, there's acceleration. The situation uh, being examined here is that there is a bicycle wheel with the axis mounted horizontal and no friction in this axle. Um, it's a light bicycle wheel that took the tire off, so there's a groove that we can wrap string around the tire. And this string uh, partially supports a mass that will be descending towards the ground when we let go of the wheel. Um, I won't use these numbers right away, but the radius of the wheel, the moment of inertia of the wheel. And the up, I'm working with positive in the upward direction. So the tension in the string minus the weight of the object so a positive term, a negative term for the downward direction of mg equals the mass of the object and then minus a. a represents the size of the acceleration. It's a negative number. The acceleration is downward when this mass is released. Um, so I went ahead and put a negative sign on here. The uh, Equation governing the dynamics for rotation is torque equals moment of inertia times angular acceleration. There is a torque in this system on the bicycle wheel due to the force represented by the tension in the string. Our normal uh, formula for torque is force times lever arm, that's perpendicular distance to the direction of the force. Our linear acceleration is really what we're ultimately going to want to find. Um, tangent to the wheel is equal to the radius of the wheel times the uh, angular acceleration. So I'm going to start with this uh, torque equation, torque equals I alpha, and make some substitutions. Uh, the first substitution I'm going to make is that the force is going to be represented with T. I'm going to let T replace force here. T is the force acting on this wheel, and the radius of the wheel will be used because the string comes off tangent to the circle. So let's just go ahead and carry this down here. So I'd have torque times the radius of the wheel equals I. And then instead of alpha, I'm going to substitute in the acceleration divided by R. So there's uh, what we have, and we have to uh, somehow come up with a a solution for this for the A. Well, some more substitutions are in order, and this provides a substitution for the tension. The tension is going to be mg minus ma. Is it reasonable that the tension in the string will be less than the weight of the object? Yes, if we say that this object is descending, the tension here does not equal the weight. If the tension equaled the weight, there'd be zero acceleration. The upward force would equal the downward force on the object. So there we have the tension. Let's go ahead and put that in here. So mg minus ma. And I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by r. So there's our r squared. And let's go ahead and uh, um, I want to get terms that involve A on the same side. So there's no coefficient to multiply, distribute through the parentheses. I'm going to add MA to both sides. So if I can keep this on the screen for you. So we're adding MA to both sides, leaving us with on the left MG, and on the right IA over R squared plus MA. Now I'm going to factor out the A symbol. So we'd have mg equals, um, I guess I'd keep the same order here of terms, i over r squared plus m and an A. And now let's divide by the parentheses on both sides. So we'd have mg over the quantity i over r squared plus m. This is our a value. And, sorry, scoot that up a little bit. mg divided by the quantity i over r squared plus m. Is this reasonable? Is this reasonable? Now let's suppose we have a very large m and just a kind of small i. Suppose we have a very large m. 
then the denominator can be simplified. If m is very large compared to i over r squared, we can ignore i over r squared. So for the case of an extremely large mass, this acceleration becomes approximately mg over m, which becomes g. So for very large mass, this object has very little uh, influence from the wheel, of accelerating the wheel, and we get an acceleration just about equal to um, 9.8 meters per second squared downward. What about if the mass is very small? What if the uh, mass is very small? Well, to do this, so small m, and I want small m compared to, so with respect to, the i over r squared. So I'm going to be dropping off this, uh, this m in the denominator. So for the case of a small mass and a good sized i divided by r squared term, we can simplify this and have that the acceleration is equal to mg divided by i over r squared or mg r squared over i if I invert and multiply this fraction. Now, if we're in a case of a wheel here, and let's say we have uh, most of the mass on the rim of the wheel, the spokes are very light, then approximately I is, let's use capital M for the wheel, I might even put a W on that. The rotational inertia of the wheel would be approximately the mass of the wheel times R squared, just M R squared. And if we substitute that in here, then I get acceleration is equal to m g r squared over capital M r squared. And the um, r squareds are canceling. And if m is a lot bigger than the mass that's descending, and the mass of the wheel much bigger than the mass that's descending, this acceleration is approximately zero. If we have a huge wheel up here and just a little BB or some small mass uh, that's on the end of the string, the acceleration is going to be a small number. That's reasonable. So we have found an equation here. I'll go ahead and circle it. We found a formula for the acceleration of the descending mass uh, that depends on the descending mass value, the rotational inertia of the wheel, and the radius of the wheel squared. Um, and it is a good thing to kind of check units as well here. Um, the units of rotational inertia are kilograms times meter squared. Now the meter squared will cancel here. Kilograms plus kilograms are kilograms. Kilograms here cancel. And we have meters per second squared for the units of g, the acceleration due to gravity. That's what we need, meters per second squared for the uh, acceleration value. So now let's put some numbers in and see what we come up with. What if the mass um, that's descending is 1.2 kilograms, the moment of inertia is 0.38 kilograms meters squared, and r is 25 centimeters? Well, I'm going to go ahead and use the formula that was developed. Uh, so 1.2 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. We've already checked the units are appropriate. And 0.38 and then we're to divide by r squared. So what caution or what uh, extra step do I have to make here? Everything's in standard metric units. For the r squared, I need to put in 0.25 and square that, and then plus 1.2. You should work this out on your own calculator, uh, but I come up with a value of 1.62 meters per second squared for the acceleration. Is that reasonable? Well, it's positive, and uh, we set this up so the A symbol would represent the positive, a positive number in going towards the ground, 1.62 meters per second squared. And it's less than 9.8 meters per second squared. It's not in free fall, so that's reasonable. What about the tension in the string? The tension in the string, well, earlier we saw T equals mg minus ma, and that 
um, reduces to the calculation of mg 1.2 times 9.8 minus 1.2 times 1.62. And again, you should do this on your own uh, calculator. I came up with 9.82 newtons for the tension in the string. And the mg value, this first uh, calculation, is 11.76 uh, newtons. So it is appropriate that the tension in the string is smaller than the weight of the object. That's why the object descends. The upward force is smaller than the downward force. So 9.82 newtons. And now what's the speed of the object if it uh, descends 1.7 meters? What's the speed if it descends 1.7 meters? Well, in this system, the rotational inertia is constant, the masses are constant, the size of the wheel is constant, um, the radius out to where the string is is constant. So the acceleration will be constant. And we can use the kinematic equations to come up with the uh, value for the speed after we've uh, descended by uh, 1.7 meters. What we don't know is the time. If we say we descend from rest, then V naught is zero. V is what we're trying to find. The acceleration is 1.62 meters per second squared. The distance that we're descending, I'm going to use Y, is 1.7 meters. And we can use the fourth, what I would call the fourth kinematic equation. Uh, v squared is V naught squared plus 2ay in the vertical direction. Um, so in this case, we have v squared equals 0 squared plus 2 and 1.62 meters per second squared. And yeah, I'll, be, I'll be technical here. So it's in the downward direction, so I'll make that a negative to carry put the minus sign on this vector uh, value of acceleration. But also, the uh, distance we go down is negative. If we start from um, some position, call that zero in the y direction, we're going down minus 1.7 meters to where our object is, and we want to know its speed at that time. So the two minus signs will multiply and give a positive. Um, so for v squared, and I just see something a little, um, I think I'm OK. Um, 3.2 should be less than 6. And I'm getting 5.51 for the square of the velocity. So I take a square root of both sides, and I come up with 2.35 meters per second. 2.35 meters per second. So that looks good. Uh, is there another way to find the, uh, the speed? And the answer is yes. We can find the speed by using energy principles. Use energy principles. In terms of energy, mgh is equal to, at, that's potential energy at the start, and there's no kinetic energy of either linear or rotational. So at the start, we have all potential energy. Down at the 1.7 meter position, then we're going to have kinetic energy of rotation and kinetic energy of the mass that's descending. So we have those. Uh, to work with. Let's go ahead and, and put in the numbers. So our mass is 1.2 kilograms, 9.8 for the acceleration due to gravity. We're descending 1.7 meters. And then we have 1 half. The I value is 0.38. The omega squared can be written as V squared over R squared. I'll put that out here. V equals R omega. So I can make a substitution. Omega is V over R, and I have to square it. And then we have 1 half the mass that's descending, 1.2 kilograms, and then V squared here. So there is our energy equation, starting energy, final energy, all of the potential energy going into two forms of kinetic energy. So if I've done this calculation right, I got uh, 20.0 on the left. And here I have uh, 3.04 v squared plus 0 0.6 v squared. So the 20 is, I'm sorry, I'm off the screen a little bit. Uh, the 20 is 3.64 v squared. Divide both sides 
by 3.64 and I get V squared of uh, 5.49 starting to look familiar and we get a velocity that's 2.34 meters per second close enough to 2.35 there's just some rounding errors going on uh, but this we get the same solution based on kinematics uh, knowing the acceleration or conservation of energy so there's an example using uh, rotation dynamics torque equals i alpha the string per times r gives us the torque the alpha is replaced with a divided by r and we continue from there so Play that again if you'd like to. Ask your instructor if you have questions.